Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with the Dwarfs, gonna be taking on the Tomb Kings. Gone with a bit of a fire build today, not full on since we have regular cannons instead of flame cannons, but let's get to it. We've got Ungrim Iron Fist leading the way for the Karak Kadrin Dwarfs, just mostly because I love the color scheme. We've got two Iron Drakes. The regular flamethrower type and one with the troll hammer torpedoes in the center. Two units of slayers, one of them is a giant slayer, one of them the dragonback slayers. You've also got a front line of dwarf warriors, warriors of dragonfire pass of course with the extra fire damage. We've also got this thane here, he's got his weakness to fire area of effect item. We've also got four miners with blasting charges, one without. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my build. My opponent's got some carrion scattered around, two Shopti Great Bows, one of which is the Chosen of the Gods, one regular Shopti, a Necrotect, Grand Hierophant Katep on his DJ setup here. Let's take a look at his spells. He's got uh, Cursed Blades, Incantation of Protection, Desiccation, as well as Sandstorm, of course. Front line of Skeleton Warriors mixed with some Tomb Guard, one Bone Giant as well. So without further ado, let's get the battle rolling. You can see here uh, the uh, Dawi Cannon is going to be opening up shots on the Carrion at first. Uh, obviously, we're going to be focusing on the uh, Shot to Great Bows once we can, but the Carrion will block some shots there. You can see the Miners here taking some shots from those Ushapti, so a little bit of an artillery engagement, if you can call it Ushap to Great Bows artillery. I'm certainly thinking that these Dwarves would call them that, but uh, anyway. Yeah going to be definitely favorable for me to take this artillery engagement, especially since they're cheap, shooting at relatively cheap miners. Meanwhile, in the back line here, these uh, carrion are flying straight over and taking some shots from the iron drakes. The flame ones will just do a ton of damage in general, and the, uh, the troll hammer torpedoes, of course, have bonus versus large, and carrion do count as large unit models. So, uh, yeah. Or do they? Ah, oh, they actually count as infantry. I was totally thinking these guys were large. Interesting, so they do only count as small entity size, infantry size, if you will, for uh, bonus versus infantry and bonus versus large. But yeah, you've got some iron drakes, uh, throwing some fire up in the sky here, obviously because the carrion have low armor, it should make some decent damage, except unfortunately they do fly slightly outside of the maximum range there. Doesn't make the best contact, but a couple of the torpedoes landing some good hits there. Meanwhile, the artillery engagement continues. You can see the Shopti Great Bows have taken some damage. Uh, we're also focusing on the melee of Shopti. At least a couple of shots there. Ooh, a nice shot into those Tomb Guard as well. But uh, yeah, the main focus is going to be, of course, these are Shopti Great Bows here up on this hill. A very beautiful shot of them. And uh, the Bone Giant going to be spooling up shots right behind them. But yeah, the Dawi Gunpowder is going to have something to say to this. You know what they say, uh, don't bring a bow to a gunfight. Here come the cannonballs now, knocking back a few of those who shot to great bows, staggering them quite nicely. Uh, you can see the carrion have all kind of pulled over to this side. They all have taken some damage from the iron drakes, although of course it's not the best target. It's the only target really in range now, and it's the only ranged unit I have that I really want to dedicate to shooting at these uh, carrion, because of course the cannons need to be focused on the shot to great bows, but uh, yeah, you can see we're moving up a little bit. We're going to be getting a melee engagement underway relatively shortly, but roasting a few more carrion up in the sky here. Uh, man, what a cool unit. And Iron Drakes seem to be decent against certain factions. Uh, certainly the Tomb Kings with their weakness to fire in terms of their leadership and just low armor infantry in general. The uh, Troll Hammers can definitely get quite a bit of done, or the, uh, the regular Iron Drakes, rather can get quite a bit of work done. I don't know that they're necessarily a super meta pick in this matchup, but oh man, that thing is getting blasted by the uh, Bone Giant there. You can see we've just about taken down one unit of Ushabti Great Bows here. Blasting charges coming in, and blasting charges do count as fire damage, so these Tomb Guard are going to have that weakness to fire, and you can see just from that one volley of blasting charges, they took a ton of damage. The uh, Iron Drakes also firing in the side there very cinematically. Uh, awesome stuff. They are going to be focused mostly on the infantry fight now, at least one of the groups here, so getting in some good shots, and let's watch the roast as it roasts out these uh, Tomb Guard nonetheless. The Necrotect is, of course, flammable, being a Tomb King character. 47 weakness to fire with the uh, Iron Beard's ring and everything all said and done here, but uh, yeah, we might actually get a little bit of friendly fire, no pun intended, 
but the troll hammer torpedo is now going to be focused on their shop to gray bows or sorry their melee shop to here and the giant slayers as well all this anti-large ap means that these are shopped here are going to go down in a very quick hurry uh, let's watch this volley come in and just explode quite a few of them you can see two models plus going down there for the giant slayers as well more blasting charges coming in on the side there those skeleton warriors are going to crumble away and at this point things are already already looking pretty rough for the tomb kings uh you know taking a uh ranged engagement against the Dawi is pretty rough with the Tomb Kings. It can be potentially really tough to win uh, just because they have much better range than you do. Uh, that being said, I think my opponent was maybe a little bit over aggressive here. Granted, his shop to gray bows were getting taken out pretty bad, but uh, you can see four warriors will trade just fine, even against like Tomb Guard, just because Tomb Guard have such low AP values. And uh, you can see here, if you have a look, they only have nine AP, so it's really pretty poor so even the dwarf warriors can get some good work done yeah uh, carrion had come down on this cannon and we kind of crossfired which ended up doing a little bit of friendly fire to these iron drakes but uh, they're perfectly fine here firing into the side of these uh, skeleton warriors so we'll soak up some awesome cinematics of them just roasting out this uh, this side side shot here and yeah at this point Kotep's going to be in trouble. He does unleash a pretty nice sandstorm, uh, or skull storm rather, uh, right on top of those miners. But uh, you can see Ungrim making his way in the back, getting ready to take down the bone giant. But at this point, my opponent is going to admit defeat as, for all intents and purposes, the battle is over here. But uh, very fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. I do think that this matchup can be tough for the Tomb Kings if you try and outshoot the dwarves, certainly. Um, there are very few factions that can truly outshoot the dwarves. So, <laughs> going with that uh, that kind of build as the Tomb King is definitely a bit risky. Uh, just a bit of fun here with the Iron Drakes, but one of them able to rack up 71 kills and get some pretty good work done, like against the Tomb Guard and some of those Skeleton Warriors and others. They were also okay at defending against the Carrion. Again, not exactly the role they're designed for, but certainly roasting out chaff is always useful. Uh, the miners did quite well there. I like the Thane Flame item. I don't know that it's necessarily super competitive, but uh, there are potentially some um, some ways you could augment it. Like I know Brimstone Guns also do fire damage, um, Flame Cannons, of course. So there are quite a few different units on the Dowie roster that do fire damage, so you could potentially get some good... Uh, synergy with that even just layering them on top of these warriors of dragonfire past and infantry fight will help them trade a lot more cost effectively in general but uh, yeah for the tomb kings pretty rough stuff always nice to see kotep on the ch on the uh, dj setup but in terms of trying to outshoot the dwarves i don't necessarily think that's the way to go as the tomb kings and this matchup can potentially be rough as the tomb kings but there's a build i've been meaning to try here i haven't really had a chance uh, to get a good game in with it so take this with a grain of salt here but just uh, kind of from what I've been thinking here is you take Ark and the Black uh, you're probably gonna want to only take Soul Blight and maybe Doom and Darkness um, if you have the cost but mostly just Soul Blight um, of course the Tomb Blade of Arcan for the Skeleton Summons and the Staff of Nagash as well just to get that uh, Soul Blight up a little faster and then, um, hmm, you may want to take him on the chariot, honestly, just to make him a little bit better against dealing with blobs of dwarves. Uh, it does make him a bit more expensive, but uh, let's say for the sake of cheapness, you're going to take him on foot. And then, rather than trying to outshoot the dwarves, we're just going to go with the heavy armor-piercing melee rush. So, uh, three Ushabti, a couple of Tomb Scorpions. Now, uh, Tomb King's chariots did get a bit cheaper in the last patch. Combined with some nerfs to Dwarf Mass means that Tomb King's Chariots are probably going to be pretty good in this matchup, so we'll grab four of them, grab some Skeleton Warriors for the front line. At this point, we've got a little bit of points left, so we could potentially come in here and drop a few things. Um, all of these items in particular are pretty useful, but maybe we drop the Staff and the Gash just to get it a little bit cheaper so that we can afford a couple of Tomb Guard just to kind of form a decent backbone, although Tomb Guard don't necessarily trade great against most dwarf infantry they do have a higher leadership in melee defense and form kind of a backbone or you know you could even go super cheap and wide and just grab a ton of skeleton warriors you probably want to grab a couple carrion actually do something like this to help tie down missiles um, you don't have any armor piercing missiles to deal with gyrocopters but the carrion can kind of chase them around pretty effectively so maybe 
we just go with something like this maybe we'll grab one more skeleton warrior just to fill out some more numbers so yeah something like this if it's super heavy melee rush uh, with the chariots kind of running disruption and, and everything uh, again I haven't really tried this myself but something tells me it could potentially be pretty effective against the dwarves but uh, yeah that's just kind of my theory craft list if you will so feel free to try it out I'm gonna see if I can get a few games in with it see how it does and uh, give you guys a report back but anyway hope you guys enjoyed watching if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time